Mark Gold's autobiography, written, produced, and narrated by Mark Gold. This autobiography will describe how I became person, teacher, and leader I am today, as well as describing my family members and others who played an important role in transforming me into the man I am today. It will also portray some of the social, cultural, and personal experiences in my lifetime that affected my values and beliefs. So sit back and enjoy the life story of Mark Gregory Gold. The only reason I am here today is because of the decisions my grandparents made in their lifetime. Though they have all passed away, they still live through my family and I with the values they have instilled in us. For example, my dad's father, Samuel Gold, taught and demonstrated the value of hard work for us. He started his own dry cleaning business in Clifton, New Jersey, and every day worked the long hours of 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. He did this so his family would be provided for, and his two only sons' responsibility were to get good grades in school. My mother's dad promoted the value of trust. He was the first one to tell me that a man is only as good as his word, and if you lost that trust, you've lost everything. He was always there for my mother and our family. My mother and father were married in 1977, and I was born on August 2nd, 1984, 618 AM, at Chilton Memorial Hospital in Pompton Plains, New Jersey. It also happened to be the same hospital as the great leader of the New York Yankees, Derek Jeter, was born in. I lived the first two years of my life in Jackson, New Jersey. My father was and still involved in horse racing. So during my early years of my life, I grew up on a horse farm was required to do some manual labor around the farm. My family has told me that I was an active slash hyper child that would at times cause some havoc. But because I was so active during the day, I never had any trouble sleeping. My mother's side of the family was Russian Catholic, so my mother grew up on Christmas, and once she met my father, she converted to Judaism. However, she was adamant that we continue to celebrate Christmas. I believe that I gained the value of standing my ground when I strongly believe in something as my mother did with celebrating Christmas. My father taught me the belief of how important compromising with individuals is to ensure that both parties be happy. As you could tell, this compromise worked out well for me as I truly enjoyed the celebration of both holidays. My dad was married before he married my mother. He had two children during that marriage, my brothers Evan and Eric. Up until this point in my lifetime, we were one big, happy family. However, life wasn't always a walk on the beach. When I was six years old, my parents got a divorce. My mother's sister and I moved out of the house. It was a day I would never forget because I left for school in the morning living in the house with my dad and mother, and then got picked up for school and went home to a new house. I believe this is where I began to develop the ability to adapt to new situations which I believe is an important attribute for a leader to have. Now that my father was out of the house, I depended on my older sister, who was four years older than me, to watch over me at school and at home. She taught me how to communicate with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis and within group settings. So I have my sister to thank for the leadership quality of effective communication skills. At times it was difficult without a fatherly presence at home. And from the ages of 9 through 13, my sister and I did not see our father. My Uncle John tried to fill that void. During the early years of my life, my Uncle John grounded and humbled me. He taught me to be thankful for what I had and always strive to do my best no matter what I was doing. On a side note, as I have mentioned my, that my family is involved in horse racing, my Uncle John Turok was the first racehorse driver to win a race this millennium. It was a difficult time in my life not having my father around, but my sister and I supported each other. I attended all of her dance recitals and she attended my sporting events, whether it was basketball, soccer, or baseball. But during this time period of my life, I learned to be an independent person and made sure that I supported my family members, even if it meant taking some responsibilities around the household to help ease the burden from my mother. Growing up as a young teenager was interesting. As you could tell, I really had no sense of style, but I did have a great rapport with my cousins, which we were all born in the same summer of 1984. 
We were a close group of cousins, and as we went through our teenage years, we lived and learned through each other's mistakes and fortunes. In 1995, my mother met someone new and fell in love. In 1997, my mother and Stephen Birnbaum got married and we moved to Montville, New Jersey. It was nice to have a man presence back in my sister's and my life. However, we still did miss our father. One day in 1997, my sister was in a local shopping market where she saw our aunt, who was married to my dad's brother. Now we haven't seen our aunt in over about five years because we lost contact with my father. She told my sister that they were going to have family over their house to mourn our grandmother's death. She stated that my father would be there. At this point in my life, my sister and I haven't seen our father in four years. We each tried multiple times to contact him, but had no luck. However, my sister and I decided to muster up the courage to knock on the door with tears streaming down our face. It was one of the most difficult decisions I had to make in my lifetime, but it taught me that I must have the courage to take some risk in my life, even if I'm not sure if I'm going to like the answers that I may find. After 1997, my family was back together again. It was not an easy transition, and there were still some rough times ahead and some hard questions to be asked and answered. But in my opinion, our family adversity has made me a stronger individual to this very day. It was nice to have my family back intact transitioning to high school. During my freshman and sophomore year, I had a couple of girlfriends, but I also had my little brother, Jared Thomas Birnbaum, enter our lives. He has shaped some of the beliefs of why I want to be a leader. He has taught me that it is important to be a good role model and take time to explain things to him as a bigger brother which led me to the important value of teaching the youth. The one individual who really changed my life and the way I go about looking at situations was my high school resource room teacher, Mrs. Greenspan. Throughout my years in education, I was a classified student with a learning disability. However, Mrs. Greenspan did not focus on my learning disability. She focused on my strengths to work around my disability. She is the individual who is responsible for me entering the field of special education. She influenced me to make a difference in the students' lives as she did in mine. With my confidence in my abilities to succeed in the classroom, it also led to my confidence outside of the classroom. I had a new girlfriend junior year and truly excelled on the athletic fields. Our school soccer team won a state sectional title, our second in school history. On the athletic field, I gained some leadership qualities such as courage to take a game-winning shot and humility to admit when I was wrong. Also enthusiasm to pick up my teammates when they thought all their hopes were gone. Along with the ability to laugh at myself, those qualities that I mentioned before led me to become a three-sport captain in soccer, basketball, and lacrosse, where my teammates relied on me to provide them a leadership. I hit game-winning shots in all three sports that I played in, won MVP awards, state titles, played in all-star games, and had many more accomplishments. However, without the support of my teammates, none of those accomplishments would have ever been achieved. But athletics also taught me that as hard as I worked on the athletic fields, I had to work even harder in the classroom and for my community. Mrs. Greenspan taught me that I must be a productive part of the community. She created two programs that I was elected by my peers to become president of. The first program was called Footprints, where we as high school students would go into elementary special ed classrooms and read books to these students and act as role models for them. The second program was called Dare to Dream, where a group of special education students would present a motivational program for children that were challenged physically and mentally. My desire to become a principal and a school leader was confirmed during my senior year of high school. A large population of students within the school was discriminating against a classroom of special education self-contained students for not being their term of normal. I myself was a classified special education student at the time, as well as a three-sport captain, a peer leader mentor, president of Cultural History Club, president of Footprints, and Dare to Dream. I do not tolerate discrimination against any individual and decided it was time to campaign throughout the school to eliminate all bias against other students. I created a club that advocated for the rights of these self-contained special education students as well as others that may have been facing discrimination. After a few months campaigning, 
protesting and advocating for these rights. Our school became a true inclusion setting where every individual was accepted for who they were. This experience has made me realize that once I become a leader of a whole school, I must put forth the same determination to ensure that all individuals, whether it may be the faculty, staff, mainstream students, inclusion students, or self-contained students, are not discriminated against within our community. After graduating high school in 2003, I attended William Patterson University for a special education degree. I also spent one year at Salve Regina University. During college, my friends and I started some traditions that are still happening to this very day, like going up to Lake George every year, or going to the Preakness Stakes every single year. I truly have a great group of friends. My friends knew that I did not have a bar mitzvah party when I turned 13, because all the money was needed for my mother and stepfather's wedding, so they threw me a surprise beer mitzvah party when I turned 21. And let me tell you, it was an experience. College wasn't all about fun and games with me. It was where I began to develop my pedagogy and my professional aspirations to one day become a leader of a whole school, community, or maybe someday a state. This is now the reason I sit here with everyone in the room. Because like you, I have the aspirations to continue to grow as a person, professional, and as a leader. Throughout my years in college, my family has grown. Two of my brothers and my sister were married. Both of my brothers' families had children. So I'm an uncle to Ethan, Lillian, Sutton, Sydney, and Brandon Gold. We are one big happy family. I am currently the head coach of two AAU basketball teams. I am also the director of basketball operations for our AAU basketball organization. Our 8th grade team is going to the national tournament this July, and our 4th grade team were champions of their league this year. I'm currently entering my second year teaching special education at Maplewood Middle School in Maplewood, New Jersey. My teaching philosophy is to have a student-centered classroom that is a risk-free environment. I'm there to lead the students in the right direction by prompting them, but they must come to the answers themselves or else there won't be any self-actualization. I believe we as educators have a great responsibility to sculpt the young minds of today. Therefore, we must use every resource that is available to us to provide the students with the necessary tools for every student to succeed. I would like to thank each and every one of you for listening to my journey through life thus far. And as I conclude this autobiography, I would like you to reflect upon a poem that I read when it seems like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. It is called, Within You is the Strength to Meet Life's Challenges by Lisa Roble. You are stronger than you think. Remember to stand tall. Every challenge you encounter strengthens your mind and your soul. Every trouble you overcome increases your understanding of life. When all your troubles weigh heavily on your shoulders, remember that beneath the burden you could stand tall, because you are never given more than you can handle, and you are stronger than you think.